Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart and welcome to another Epic Battles Waterloo Stroke Napoleonic painting tutorial. This will be the third in a series. Um, I've very recently put out two videos um, of a tutorial around the British infantry sprues that I was very kindly supplied by Warlord Games prior to their release in January of 2022. This is the first of the um, cavalry sprues that I've dug into properly and um, this is the Royal Horse Artillery. Now the this model in front of you is part of the nine pounder gun that you get with the heavy cavalry sprue and I've already painted the six pounder gun that you get with the light cavalry sprue and the tutorial will work for both miniatures because they're slightly different poses and the size of the gun is different but other than that they're both royal horse artillery so you can interchange what I what I sort of teach you here now I'm just going to focus on these two men and the wheel and the gun, the main part of the gun, just to keep the video a little bit shorter. The information you, you'll, you'll gain from watching me do these two will be easy to transfer over uh, to the other two, which I'll be doing separately and off camera. And I will do the gun on camera as well, because that's important, of course but it'll definitely keep the video a little bit more manageable. Now, a very, very quick apology before we get started to uh, longer term subscribers of the channel that are used to a little bit more of a mix of topics rather than just Epic Battles and Napoleonic. Those other systems, and I've said this before in other videos, the other systems have not gone away. I will return to them, but I'm just uh, making use of the my excitement at the moment and, and some of the things I've got hold of prior to release. Um, videos for other things will return soon, so please hang in there if you're, if you're not into Napoleonics like this. Now you'll see the miniatures already prepared. Now I primed it black first and then I've used an airbrush to do a Zenithal white highlight over the top and this is a fairly heavy Zenithal and on the video itself it made us look like I primed it white but I've sprayed top down using the white leaving some shadow underneath and it's a little bit heavier in, in some areas than others but what will happen is when I paint over the top in thin layers and I'll be using primarily Citadel contrast painters glazes for the first base layer that will, will give some natural shadow and highlight if you've not used zenithal highlighting before if I put up a link in now to the first in, infantry tutorial video and I actually show you how I do it but rather than that repeat that in every single video I'll just refer you back to, to that original one. Now the aim is to use contrast entirely for the base coats apart from metallics on everything in this range. There's two reasons for that. One, I really like using them for base coats. They're, they're very nice to paint with. They flow well and it's quite enjoyable. And it seems to be a much quicker way of laying base coats down. Um, but also, because I think they're a very, very good tool for people who want to get armies on the on the table quickly. Now, this, this video will be aimed at kind of beginners and intermediate level. Um, the beginner stage will be just the contrast stage, um, and then you can leave it at that. Then the intermediate level will be, will be the highlighting and the extra bits that you put on top, which you don't have to do. Now, with all that in mind, it did create a problem right from the get-go, which doesn't normally happen, but it's to do with the colour of the wood that the Royal Horse Artillery use. Um, it's a very nice kind of blue, bluey grey colour, maybe eggshell in some pictures, maybe darker blue in others. I'm sure it's got an official name. I haven't looked for it. I've just looked at pictures and things online. Um, there isn't anything that really matches that in the in the contrast range. So right from the start, I thought, well, maybe I need to go away from contrast and go back to a more traditional style of painting. And I've got plenty of colours in my range which would do the job perfectly. But I really wanted to kind of stick to that process of, of using contrast. So I've decided to actually Actually mix colors which isn't particularly um, something you'd normally see in a beginner level but I've decided to go and do it anyway because I believe it's really really easy so what I'm doing is I'm going to mix two parts contrast apothecary white which is essentially a gray wash the reason it's they call it white is because you put it over a white paint job and it shades the recesses um, and with that I'm mixing one part of contrast griff charger gray which has got a slight blue tint to it and it mixing together will give you a nice gray paint which will shade the pre um, sprayed white that's already there which I believe once once the rest of the miniature is painted gives a nice kind of light grey bluish tinted wood effect. All I'm doing is painting this mix on fairly heavily but only getting it I'm being very careful to only get it on the wheel here. So 
So the next stage is to layer on the blue for the jackets and I'm going to be using Contrast Levide on Blue. And one thing I'm doing when I'm applying this blue is I'm actually leaving the whole front of the jacket unpainted. And that's where the, the gold or yellow braiding would be and I'm going to be doing, a, doing it gold. The reason I'm doing that is because I want a strong gold finish and to draw the eye on the front of the jackets. And if you look at some pictures, it looks like thin gold lines. And if you look at other pictures, it looks like one big mass of gold on the front because the lace is so close together. And that's the effect I want to go for. I know on the studio paint job, they very carefully painted in the uh, thin gold lines, but I'm just gonna leave the whole front um, to be gold. Um, and you'll see the effect a little bit later on. So that's all the blue done. Now try to be very careful not to get any on the areas I don't want the blue. Um, and that does mean you have to be a little bit more precise than you may be with some base coats, but it saves you a lot more time later on. And that's what I'm trying to achieve with these um, contrast paint jobs. So by leaving the cuffs white, leaving the collars white, um, leaving the front where I'm going to put the gold white, it makes it a lot easier to apply those colours afterwards um, and they won't need to go back and tidy them up too much. Now, next stage is going to be some contrast Blood Angels Red and I'm going to do the cuffs and the, the collars in this colour as a base coat. Right, so that's the cuffs and collars done in red. And you'll notice there is a sash on the officer, which I didn't mention, I've, I've painted that in red as well. Now onto some black, We've got quite a few areas that need to be black. So we've got the helmets, the base is all black, the fur at the top, the um, sponge, the scabbards, the boots. Um, and for that, I'm going to be using contrast black Templar. So next up, I'm going to add the flesh. I'm going to use contrast again, um, Gilliman flesh. So next up is going to be the gray on the trousers and I'm going to be using contrast Basilicanum gray. Next up, I'm going to paint a little bit of silver colour onto the hilts of the swords, and I'm going to be using black metal from that, and that's my scale colour, or scale 75. So next stage, we're going to put on some gold, and this is the first time I'm going to add some gold to the front. And as I mentioned earlier, Technically they are thin strips of braid, but looking at some different pictures and things, um, it does vary. And these have got a nice uniform detail here. Some of the pictures I found on the left hand side of the breast, it was almost fully gold, but slightly less on the, on the, on the right hand side. Um, I just want to make sure that there's enough gold on the model so it sort of stands out on the tabletop. So rather than having the blue stripes in between and thin strands of gold, I'm going to cover the whole area in gold and bear with me, it, it, it does work. So for that, I'm going to be using this scale color Necro Gold. It's uh, one of my favorite paints ever. Really lovely, lovely gold. It's very desaturated. Um, and I'm gonna use it just for a base layer on this front here. I will use a lighter gold later on for the other gold areas on the model and to highlight these parts.
So that's the Necro Gold on. Um, the next part I'm going to do is the hair, um, the actual men, men's hair. Um, I'm using three colours for that, for this project, mostly because the shakos are all black, so I don't want to use black hair. So I'm using Contrast Nasdrag Yellow, Contrast Wildwood, and Contrast Gore Grunter Fur. And there's only two models here, but there's obviously two more off camera as well. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with Gorgon de Fer because at the same time I'm going to paint the handle of the mop here as well. And next up going to be using some elven gold and this is a slightly lighter gold than we used before and that's for the rest of the gold trim so chin straps a little bit on the helmets a little bit on the the scabbards as well and i will in in a moment use it to highlight the fronts of the uh, the gold braiding on the jackets as well but in terms of finishing this model at a, at a basic stage you you could leave that part and just do the other bits i've just mentioned Right, so that's the gold trim on, and you, you could really leave these models as they are now. That's a base layer on everything, and you could base it up and away you go. Obviously, you need to finish the cannon, which I haven't showed you as yet. However, we're going to go a little bit further now. But the first thing to do is start to add some highlights to really make the miniatures pop. And I'm going to do some highlighting on the blue first. Um, and to do that, I'm going to be using Scale Colors Fantasy Games range, and it's SFG29. So that's the blue highlighted. And the next will be to highlight the red using Evil Sun Scarlet. So that's the red highlighted. And now I just wanna make the flesh stand out a little bit more. And the way to do that is to go back in with a lighter shade. So in this case, Nectura fairy flesh and just pick out the nose, the cheekbones. And then afterwards, because that might be a little bit bright in places, use a thin down glaze of contrast gillum and flesh. Now, just that light glaze of 50% water, 50% gillum and contrast flesh it just tones the highlight I've just put on just back slightly and blends it into somewhere or something in the middle so next up the very slightest of highlights on the sword hilts at their belts and I'm going to use game air silver for that and now the final stage for the the crew um, is the white and just tidying up the white now most of the white you see there is is what's left from the original pre-highlight and dry brush so it's very easy now just to go and, and tidy this up if i'd gone in with a very kind of usual base coat um going back over and making the strapping look clean would have been a bit more challenging So that's the main crew done. Next up, I'm going to assemble them on the base with the cannon itself, because that makes it a little bit easier to paint the barrel of the gun. So that's everything assembled on the base. Next up, we need to tackle the barrel of the gun. Now the color I'm going to use for the base layer of the barrel itself is scale color Viking gold. And I'm gonna do a, a few little highlights on there of the scale color dwarven gold.
So while we're waiting for that to dry, there's a few little metal areas that we need to pick out. They'll almost be black, but I'm going to go with a very, very dark metal. So that's going back to black metal from scale color. That's going to be the rims of the wheels and a few of the other metal components. Now a quick wash of Seraphin Sepia over the barrel of the gun. Now a little bit of Nuln Oil just on the black metal areas. And just a final highlight of Dwarven Gold again on the top of the cannon. So here we are, all finished. This is the nine pounder gun from the Royal House Artillery that you find on the British Heavy Cavalry Sprue. And I think the, uh, I'm quite happy with the color of the wood, the wheels and the, uh, uh, the part of the cannon. Um, it is quite light, um, but it seems to match the, the colors that I've seen for the reenactors and things like that more than it does for some of the um, other painted versions and things and in the Osprey books I have it's it's very very similar color to that but uh, let me know what you think if you are interested in the basing uh, I haven't talked you through that stage I do cover that in the tutorial part two for the British infantry I do tend to assume that most people have their own basing methods to match their armies but if you do like what you see there and you want to know how I achieved it it's all very very simple but I'll pop a little link now and you can uh, check that video out so this is the the other sprue, so the light cavalry sprue, which I was very lucky to get as a review um, copy. So they'll be out soon for people in January as I'm recording this, it's December. Um, so the, the crew obviously are all Royal, Royal Horse Artillery, so can be painted in exactly the same way. The gun is slightly smaller, it's a six pounder. Um, but again, same basic method, etc. Just thought I'd uh, share this with you as well. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you found the video useful in some way or another. Obviously I don't expect people to follow them completely. I know some people have bought paints and are looking to, to copy along. I have posted all of the paints I've used today in the description. So you can have a little look there. But um, swap them out for the own colours you have. I'm really looking forward to the Army Paint, a quick, quick application range or whatever they're going to call it, their own version of contrast that's coming out soon. It'll be interesting to see if they work the same way as a Citadel contrast. Um, I don't always use contrast paints at all by any stretch of the imagination, but I find for this scale using that uh, Zenithal pre-highlight and using them for the base layer almost gives you a shade, a mid-tone and a highlight to start with, which means you can get away with one quick highlight over the top, which is exactly what you want for this kind of scale. Anyway, let me know how you're getting on with your own models. I know a lot of you have the heavy cavalry sprue. Um, pop in the comments below what your experiences are of them. And I will be bringing you more painting tutorials very, very soon. So thanks for watching. Please give us a like and a subscribe and I'll catch you soon.